Everybody's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional. Check in team number 1732 Hilltoppers. Hilltoppers here just coming off a of Miami Valley Regional win uh, last week, so congratulations on that. Uh, Hilltoppers, phenomenal robot, by the way. One of the more unique robots that I've seen uh, this year so far. Uh, so, of course, take a look. We'll be talking about uh, their elevator uh, area and also their linear slides, but we're going to go a bit more uh, into their programming and code and what's gone into that as well. Also, some cool driver feedback with this too. By the way, to help me out with this, I have Nikki, Miles, and Dawson's gonna be operating the controls. And keep an eye out for Hilltoppers, one of the favorites here at the Wisconsin Regional. Let's learn more about them coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Miles, let's talk about some of the superstructure on your robot here. Uh, we're going to be talking about your tower area, as well as you got this uh, the little intake down here. I'd love to hear more about this. And we're going to be going to more about your object state on your robot, too. Yep. Yeah, so starting off here, I'll talk a little bit about our indexer intake combo. So we can pick up both cubes and cones. Dawson, you want to show us what that looks like? So that's our cone actuation, and then cubes here. So you'll see we can just open and close real simple. We'll go up the inside of the cone and we'll grab the cubes on the outside. Now, another interesting part we have with this is our state machine, which we'll get into more later, but that allows us to do this handoff that you guys are gonna see here. So you can go cone handoff. So once we intake the cone, we'll hit our stall current and we begin our transition. Now, once we have this, this is our carrying state we're held nice and secure, and then we can go in place and we have different modes. So you'll see at the same time as we are going up, we're also extending and that allows us to not only place high, mid, but then using solely this mechanism, we can also place low. I wanna hear more about from the intake on there, when you brought in a cone there, you were bringing it, you were intaking it from the middle. So are you actually floor intaking that way or how does that work? Yeah, so we're solely a floor intake robot um, and we do, we pick up the cones from the inside. So we'll just drive into it and using, we'll be driving these wheels backwards and that just sucks it in. Oh, yeah, so that just sucks it in uh, using those wheels on the inside of the cone. So when you're, when you're going to like a substation area, is the human player just like throwing it down a certain way for you or how does that work? Yeah, so we got our human player here, Nikki. Um, she's phenomenal. She's able to chuck the cones and cubes pretty consistently, uh, decently far out of the human player station. And uh, that allows us to run quick cycles so off of the human player. So we'll have it positioned the correct way and we can just go in and uh, pick it up and we're on our way. Before we get into the object state on your robot, I want to hear a little bit more on your, your elevator and your slides here. You know, like Sans, we've done a lot of interviews. I've seen a lot of teams this season. Uh, this is definitely one of the more unique ones. How did you even come up with doing this in the first place? You know, when we look at other designs out there, uh, this seems to be so elegant, but definitely unique in its same aspect. Yeah, so a big driving factor in our design this year was a low center of gravity. We wanted to be stable and agile. So doing that, we intentionally designed our elevator to be, you know, as light as possible. So we kind of started off figuring, okay, how do we want to do, you know, our extension and we decided that we want to mount an extender like this across that gives us more support rather if we were to mount an extender this way and um, we initially tried some different things but we decided to use these drawer sliders and they're really strong they're steel they're not going to break um, but the difficult part with this obviously is we have to make a cable rigging system so that we can drive it so this actually functions as a two-stage elevator with a carriage so um, we can kind of just show manual extension on it. As you can see, as this inner stage is driven out, you have this second stage. We designed these 3D printed blocks and that allows us to mount these pulleys, which we um, rig just this rope to, and that allows us to drive it. Now, we're able to do really quick extensions because of the way this is designed. And it's also very light and compact, which is very advantageous for our low center of gravity. You're talking Design. more earlier about uh, object state as well, too. I'd love to hear what that means to your team, how you're applying that on your robot as well. And, and let's go into some of the guts of the code that goes into it as well. Yeah, so we have our two separate modes, as you've seen, cone mode and cube mode. 
and we have a complicated state machine. So because we have you know, an elevator, we have our extender here, as well as our um, indexer, those all need to work together in unison. And to do that, we use a state machine. So as we press you know, our different buttons on our driver station here, we're able to switch between our different modes, and that is um, indicated by our LEDs, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Then we begin our transition stage. Now that's the same, but through each state now after that, um, it's, it has its own steps. So we're, um, whether we're holding the elevator at this height or so to place mid, or we're holding it all the way up or low, the state machine controls all of that, and that makes it a really simple process of switching between, okay, we want to place a cone high or a cone mid or a cube mid. It makes a really seamless transition between those. Let's keep moving on the robot. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, vision uh, and then go into some of the driver feedback that you have as well too, Nikki. So I'd love to hear more about uh, how your vision works uh, on your robot and then we'll maybe show off a couple of demonstrations as well too uh, in regards to uh, different aspects of your robot and also with the uh, feedback, we'll show that as well. Yeah, so on our robot, we have a Limelight 2 and a Limelight 3 on it. And with our Limelight 3, we actually have a Google Cora um, processor on it, which is a co-processor, which sure. helps us with our object recognition. So between our cones and cubes, it's able to identify them and pick them out. It also helps us determine when we have two objects next to each other, the closer one, um, and that helps when we go in, um, narrowing into our process of where we can find um, our cone and get to the inside of our cone super easy. Um, if we want to show that. Sure. Yeah. So as you see, vision on. Um, so as you see, it will follow the cone on the inside. So when we are farther away from our driver station, um, he doesn't have to be exactly directly on the inside of the cone, making it easier and faster for those pickups from human player station to um, our community. Um, and also with these LEDs, um, we can tell um, our state. So that green there shows that we correctly intaked um, either the cone or the cube so that we are able to go and drive and place it. Um, and then the status of the light, so it's broken into three parts, low, which is our one we're on right now, so the lowest, and then it goes up to mid, which is scoring mid as well, and high. Um, and this also helps the LEDs to show us that we are in those right state areas um, in the state machine, so we are able to make sure that our code's working and that if we do run into an issue, that we can either fix it through um, either outtaking um, or ejecting the piece as well. Looking at uh, if you have a cone and a cube next to each other on it, are you actually selecting like, hey, I want to go after the cone versus the cube? Yeah, so that depends on the mode we're in. So if we are in like our cube mode, it will look at the cube and only recognize the cube. So that's when we're picking up that cube. Um, but if we're in the cone mode, it'll look at the cone and pick up that cone. Well, Hilltoppers, you have a phenomenal robot here. We just talked about your uh, awesome success you had last week as you go to the Wisconsin Regional. Can't wait to see how you do here. Uh, of course, good luck. And then we'll see you at World Championships as yeah. well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.